Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Creepage and clearance. What is that all about? Well, first, it's often associated with printed circuit boards, but it can relate to nearly any situation where you have a voltage difference between two conductors. Second, it is usually nothing we have to be too concerned about at low voltages like 5 volts or 2 volts or even 12 volts. But if you're going to be working with voltages at or above 50 volts, then this is something that you have to pay attention to. With this said, it could still apply if we're trying to micro-miniaturize even a low voltage circuit. So what is it all about? Well, in short, it is all about paths of unwanted arcing between two conductors which have differing voltages on them. In this video, I will be giving you a very basic understanding of which kind of path each of these represent and how to properly design around them. I will provide references to the standards relating to creepage and clearance at the end of this video and down in the description. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's start by understanding what these two distinct paths actually represent. Well, we want to be able to picture all of this in our minds so that when we get some distance from this video, we can stop, see the picture in our mind, and then properly know what is what. To do this, I'm going to introduce the insect world. In fact, I'm going to bring the image of a grasshopper to your mind. Now, there are two distinct ways that a grasshopper gets from place to place. The first is to walk on its six legs. As it moves along eating, it moves along the surface of whatever it is eating. The distances that it is willing to move in this way are limited. You won't find a grasshopper walking a kilometer in this fashion. It is creeping along, but only for limited distances. Get that? It is creeping along. The second, is to hop a long distance using its powerful hind legs. But its range is limited. If it has to jump in a single hop from one place to another, and the distance is great enough, it will most certainly fall short. The distance between any two locations that it might choose to jump between is the clearance between the two places. So, if the distance between any two locations exceeds the distance that the grasshopper is willing to creep along and the clearance distance that he can jump, then you can prevent the grasshopper from moving to the second location. Thus, we have the creepage and clearance distances. Now, let's look into each of these just a little more closely. Well, from our illustration, Creepage is the path that a potential arc can take across the surface of a material. This could be a printed circuit board, the body of a terminal strip, the back of a switch, anywhere where there are two conductors which have a difference of potential and there is a path along the surface of the material to follow. So let's start with a perfectly clean material in a perfectly clean environment. What are we left with in this case? Well, we're left with the material itself. And this introduces the Comparative Tracking Index, or CTI, of the material. The CTI of a material is a measure of the tendency of it to break down electrically. The 3M company defines it this way in their tech brief on the subject. Quote, the Comparative Tracking Index, CTI, is the maximum voltage measured in volts at which a material withstands 50 drops of contaminated water without tracking. Tracking is defined as the formation of conductive paths due to electrical stress, humidity, and contamination." End quote. But 
The CTI of the material isn't the only factor that has to be considered. When we determine the proper creepage distance, we also have to keep in mind the voltage difference between the two conductors and what is called the contamination factor. So, what is the contamination factor, you might ask, and why is this even an issue? Well, think about it. Dirt, dust, and other contaminants provide bridges across the otherwise good insulator of the device, or PCB. Add to this that many of these things attract the accumulation of moisture, which makes them even more conductive. Now we have even a better path for the arc to travel across. The greater the contamination factor, the larger the creepage distance needs to be. So how do we mitigate this or reduce the required creepage distance? Well, the simplest way is by using what is called conformal coating. Think of it as encapsulating the PCB in a thin layer of insulation. This is a liquid that can be sprayed on or brushed on. When cured, it forms an insulating coating. Now, as a hobbyist, I use a good quality, hard as nails, fingernail polish overcoating. It is a lot cheaper than real conformal coating. But there's a warning, it's slightly conductive until it is completely cured. Another clever ploy is to have a slot cut between two conductors. The creepage distance is out and around the slot. Now, they'll do this underneath isolated power supply parts. The part might be operating at 5 volts, but the isolation promise can be up to 1,500 volts. So, you cut a slot underneath them to artificially increase the creepage distance so that you can get the isolation you want. So, how can you determine the proper creepage distance? As a product design engineer, we use the tables provided by UL. Now, there are calculators and formulas out there that you can also use. You can look up the voltage, CTI, and contamination factor on their table to find the required creepage distance. Then, we would always add just a bit more to be absolutely sure. Now, what about clearance distances? Well, like I said before, clearance distances are the distances through the air between two conductors with opposing voltages on them. Now, the major factors affecting this distance are voltage, humidity, elevation, and whether the conductors are coated with conformal coating. Now, looking at the IPC 2221 standard, we are faced with somewhat different terminology. This is a PCB standard, so the terminology used therein is relative to the printed circuit board and the overall assembly. As such, what is commonly called clearance distance in the industry they refer to as the assembly level external conductors. On table 61, page 43 of IPC 2221A, dated May 2003, the columns of interest for clearance are the assembly columns A5, A6, and A7. Okay, so I tip my hand on one of the standards. So let's talk about them just a little bit. Well, as promised, here are the references to the standards which will help in designing around creepage and clearance. Now, this is most certainly not a complete list. Unfortunately, getting copies of these standards as a hobbyist is not always easy. For some reason, the folks that author these want to sell you a copy for more than most hobbyists want to pay. Now, I've provided some links in the description for free versions of a couple of these. Now, they may not be the latest and greatest version, but as a hobbyist, we do not need the latest and greatest. We just need informed guidance. The first one, which is more of a general standard that covers all sorts of design rules relating to printed circuit boards, is IPC 2221, which I already mentioned. 
Among these rules will be the required creepage and clearance spacing. Now, they don't use the term creepage and clearance. Rather, it is conductor spacing. I've provided a link to a downloadable PDF of this standard in the description for you. If you follow this link, start reading at about page 42. Then there is IPC 9592, which is aimed more specifically at power conversion devices that operate at voltages above 100 volts. Now, we can't overlook the UL stuff. UL 61010-1 and its international cousin, IEC 61010-1. I've provided a link to the IEC version in the description. So if you're going to be doing anything with voltages above 50 volts, now you know where to look to determine the distances you need to maintain to prevent problems. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.